Hey everybody, Rose Matter here, and welcome to part 45 of my Umineko Let's Play. The last episode was super hype, so uh, George and Jessica were taking their test to determine who will be the next head of the Ushirumiya family, and the test was they had to decide who to sacrifice, who they'd be willing to sacrifice, either their own life, the life of their most loved one, or everybody else. Jessica, well, unsurprisingly, chose to sacrifice herself. And George was the real surprising one, where he said he would sacrifice everybody except for himself and Shannon. But it seems like it was all a bluff, because what they really were trying to do is they were hell-bent on trying to fight the examiners, Rodave and Gap, in order to get them to, I guess, bring them to where their family's being held and defeat them. And then meanwhile, the, uh, the hostages attempting to make a prison break so it was just a really action-packed episode, really cool. George and Jessica are such badasses in the last episode, and I'm excited to see more of it. And it feels very hopeful, but come on, we know what game this is. Like, it's just delaying the inevitable, it feels like, but I still get myself hopeful that maybe, maybe this will be the time things will be different. Also, really quick, I want to let everybody know that I am going to be taking a week off next week. Uh, so no videos next week because I have been working like crazy both for the channel and at my real life job. So I'm just taking some time off. So unfortunately, no new episode of Umineko next Friday, but there will be one the week after. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I can't wait to get back into this whole Jessica, George, everybody. Let's see what happens. Let's go. I'm an idiot. So this is the only way I can live. But even so, I believe that one day I'll definitely be able to teach Kenan-kun about a new world. So I'm not going to buckle in a place like this. I'll definitely defeat you and save everyone. Come on, Kraus, where's your determination? Kraus was repeating his useless effort and trying to somehow open a hole between the metal bars. Useless. There's nothing useless. There's nothing. Oh, is he going to do it? He's going to do it. I bet his determination is going to break a hole. This seems so hopeful right now, but I know it's still going to end in death for everybody. But I'll enjoy this while it lasts. The lookout goats have been swallowed up by those black pits and disappeared. Now, this uh, now is their do-or-die chance. This was their only chance to break the bars. ムダと Oh, is he gonna... He's gonna do something. He is! He's gonna use his magic. He's gonna use his blade and cut the bars. Jessica's voice had reached Canon. And it certainly permeated into a stone-cold heart, and George's voice had reached Shannon. The love he had shown was embodied by strength. She would have to respond in the same way. I- this is the last question arc. I'm so interested in how this is gonna end. Probably not well, but like, I'm getting hope <laughs> that maybe... Maybe something will happen this time. An incredible metallic sound rang out. The first flash cut horizontally through several layers of the uh, through several of the metal bars, and with the next flash, they were cut through horizontally again, causing them to clatter to the ground like bamboo shoots cut by a sword. Kraus, Kyrie, and Nanjo didn't even have a clue about what had just happened. Nanjo, when Cannon hung his head a little and faltered, Shannon slapped his shoulder, smiled, and spoke. Yeah! 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 
か見張りのヤギがいませんえどうしてですガープですね人の瞬間物を勝手にガープガープガープ<笑>光線規定確認脱走者への射殺許可を申請でありますおやりなさいやっちゃいなさい Well, woof, that was a sound. <laughs> wow. Yokaidiarimasu. <laughs> <laughs> As they ran down the underground passage, the path in front of them was once again blocked by metal bars. The door was, of course, locked. However, that was not a problem for them now. Oh, is this down here? Is this where the room is with all the uh, the gold? Or are they just reusing the background? Hi, <laughs> しかしすごいわ。一体どういう原理なのかしら。原理の造興味ないね。大事なのは彼に鉄格子が切断できて、ここから脱出できることだけだ。気にするのがカノン。やれ。お任せよ。Finn sliced the metal bars again with a red trail. But there was a harsh, strange noise, and only a slight scratch was left on the metal bars. After taking a deep breath and focusing his concentration, Cannon once again extended his sword that trailed red. When he pressed it hard against the metal bars, sparks sprayed almost as though he was burning through them with a blowtorch. データ受領標的は補足地形誤差修正射撃曲線形成制御点補正完了四一丸データリンク四一丸データ受領危険区域確認問題なし <laughs> a golden arrow that sparkled gold was fired, leaving a trail, a gold tail streaming behind. It drew a curve, went through the door, through the keyhole, down the stairs, towards the underground path at full speed. <laughs> Oh, they can link too? They're gonna link as well? Cannon stopped cutting the bars and stood in front of Shannon. Behind him, Shannon closed her eyes, concentrating her mind, focusing deep, deep into the darkness of the underground path. A guided cluster round is a special kind of arrow made of 48 sub rounds bound together. It explodes mid flight and divides into 48 mini arrows. The strength of each individual one is low, but they pierce through all shields and possess total lethality against gold, uh, ground troops. And on top of that, each of the 48 possesses autonomous guidance towards their individual targets. <laughs> Nana, 
48発全部見える迎撃優先順位に注意姉さんを信じてもちろんだ僕は目を開ける必要さえない迎撃開始はあも目標健在迎撃されました248発全部<笑>シャノンとカノンはもともと一組の家具ですからね揃うと手ごわいことあいたたたこれ校内縁になっちゃうかしら落ち着け再装填男子を変更精密高速狙撃弾精密狙撃戦準備そりゃいいね追撃不能の超高速弾ゲートキーパーごときじゃ防御不能だに精密狙撃戦了解精密射撃用データ収集開始<笑>一体今のは何なんだ安心して私にもさっぱりよ一つわかるのは二人に頼らなきゃ死んでたってことねカノン君ありがとう鉄格子に戻って多分次のは迎撃できない弾が来るそんな攻撃をどう防ぐんだ打たせませんカノン君霊視線防備 At those words, Kennen closed his eyes tightly and clenched his teeth. With Shannon at the center, a pressure and impact blasted out that could only be perceived by those on human. Oh, she's going on the offensive now. Unseen, unheard impact blasted towards the Chester sisters. Oh, oh, and 410 crouched down, covering their ears, but 45 didn't make it in time. Still standing bolt upright, her eyes rolled inside her head. <laughs> そしてダブルを損傷狙撃戦を断念くリンクでモロに来たさ再起動しないと Raising their spirit particle sensitivity for precision sniping had backfired They had taken the full brunt of the spirit particle shockwave Shannon had released and not only 45 who had been hit directly but also 00 and 410 who had been linked with her were taken down And Virgilia's like, but my tongue, though, I can't do anything yet. <laughs> All of the Jester sisters collapsed. They would probably get back eventually, but it looked like it'd be hard for them to return to the battle lines for a while. There's that creepy face. Regalia tore the air with large motion, so opening a door. Gold colored door opened in the air, and countless giant goats with muscular bodies peeked their faces out. Regalia clapped her hands, urging them on. 
A prize. After glancing at each other at those words, the goats rush to the door at once, trying to get out. They got they get all stuck and they can't get out. Making the exit as tight as squeeze as the trains during the commuter rush. Oh my god, it actually happened. Each wanted to get out first, so none of them could get out. Regalia held her head in frustration. By that time, Kenneth had managed to cut just enough bars to make a gap that could be slipped through. It proved a bit of work for Kraus, large as he was, and Nanjo, whose waist was nearly his downfall. But even so, they all managed to make it through. But their relief at getting through that was short-lived. Immediately, another set of metal bars blocked the way in front of them. There was sweat on Kenan's forehead. You could tell at a glance that cutting the metal bars, which had been made even more solid by magic, was exhausting him considerably. Yes. <laughs> Only he could do it. Holding tightly onto those words, Cannon concentrated his mind again, and once more set himself to the task of cutting the bars. Shannon held her hand out towards the bars they had come through, but she stopped right away. それを Kyrie picked up a metal bar that Cannon had just cut. Kraus had no weapon, but he rubbed his fist, and two of them glared into the depths of the underground passage where the shaking was coming from. Nanjo's like, nobody told me there'd be running involved. They couldn't tell for sure since they didn't have the three-sided mirror. But there was no guarantee that George and Jessica could hold out against demon opponents for all that time. さらにその倍の全力疾走なら5分かかる。問題ない。無茶苦茶な計算です。ですが、カジマの計算式はそういうものです。申し訳ございません。あと頼みます。任せたまえ。カノンは1秒でも早く鉄合手を。シャノンは
Still holding the stuck in metal pole, Kyrie relinquished the, uh, the opposite tip to Kraus. Kraus ran there with all his might, leapt into the air and kicked it in with all of his weight and kicking power combined. All that destructive power was focused on that single pole drilling it in. Wow, good job, guys. <laughs> As the goat who had taken a pile bunker to its vitals withered with teary eyes, or writhed with teary eyes, and nodded its head. <laughs> Kraus, calm down. He's like, well, my wife's dead. Your husband's dead. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> The goat's massive body sank into the rose bush, even taking into account that a leg's power is three times that of an arm's. The strength surpassed common sense. That massive body flying up and through the air from being kicked in the chin. It was too epic. Even George seemed a little surprised. <laughs> その化け物どもの怪力が加算されてるのよ。ええ、よくわからないけど、僕にぴったりじゃないか。誰であろうとも攻撃してくるなら等しい反撃を覚悟してもらう。選手防衛、僕のポリシーそのものだ。That's why Gap couldn't easily touch him. The counter-attacking type barrier had no defensive power. However, because of its counter-attacking characteristic, it could be used in defense by making the opponent hesitate to attack. The goats were foolish, so they attacked without worrying. But the effect was being realized to the full against Gap. He lightly dodged the log-like arm. When that arm touched the barrier that protected George, it let off a strong red light. And the tip of the foot that was counterattacking gained the same shine, and the superhuman power of the goat was added to George's own. The second goat fell forwards and floated in the air for a second. Then, George's next roundhouse kick missed right over the falling goat's head. For an instant, the goat hoped to get away with its life. But no. A heel was dropped onto the back of its head, and it was forced to kiss the ground. The only way to finish off George now, that his body was wrapped up in the counter-attacking type barrier, was to not allow him a counter-attack. Next time she sucked him into the abyss, she would have to kick and drop him, kick and drop him, kick and drop him, until she kicked him to death. But George had already perfected reading the faint warning signs that told of the appearance of Gap's pitfalls. He managed to jump over that next pit. Then this time, he would probably pulverize Gap's head with his whirlwind-like kick, without holding back in the slightest, just as he had done to his parents. Or just as- just as he had done to his parents, Jesus, no! Just as it has been done to his parents! <laughs> she was able to envision that scene vividly. It was far too late now, but Gap cursed Kinzo all the same for calling her out to this ridiculous island. Ronave finally started using both of his hands to form his shield. Without a more powerful shield, he wouldn't be able to completely block Jessica's fists anymore. The enchantment on Jessica's fists grew the more she fought. The uh, permeation upgrade had already stacked several times, and those fists had also been given an impact upgrade, a piercing upgrade, and a speed upgrade, making them fists worthy to fight on par with a demon. <laughs> Hey, but the kitten's an 
動きが鈍ってきてるぜいいえジェシカ様の動きと思考動体視力が飛躍的にエンチャントされているのです私の動きは最初から変わっていませんよあなたの動きが私を捉えつつあるのですそれでも反撃はしねえわけかこれが私のこだわりですのでしかしこのままというわけにもいきますまいそろそろ本気で終わりにさせてもらいますよラナベスファーストゥーンとゥーンエクスプレッションヒッネヴァーショーンバフォーエクスプレッションヒッネヴァーショーンバフォーエクスプレッションヒッネヴァーショーンバフォーエクスプレッションヒッネヴァーショーンバフォーエクスプレッションヒッネヴァーショーンバフォーエクスプレッションヒッネヴァーショーンバフォーエクスプレッションヒッネヴァーショーンバフォーエクスプレッションヒッネヴァーショーンバフォーエクスプレッション Its sturdiness was nothing like a shield. It was literally a wall. And on top of that, with all of Renovate's magical power, it pushed Jessica back bit by bit. Did he plan on pushing her back against the wall and crushing her to death? Jessica tried to break through the wall with both fists, but it was solid. Without any exaggeration, it was solid. <laughs> I hate to say it, but Jessica's like the goats. She's just offensive, offensive, offensive. Just like attack, attack, attack. Renovay made magic signs with his fingers, almost like a ninja. The wall glowed red for just an instant and became imbued with some kind of ominous power. Almost immediately, Jessica also gained a first hand understanding of this. Every time she pounded her fists against the wall, pain rebounded upon her as though glass fragments had scattered and hit all of her body. <laughs> Alright, Jessica, you're gonna need a different strategy. Jessica,様が膝をつくのが先か、壁に押し込まれるのが先か、見物させていただきましょう。Without hesitation, Jessica slammed both fists into the wall. Each time she did, a large amount of shad scattered, tormenting her body all over. Countless red cuts soon appeared all over her body. She grimaced at the intense pain. But her eyes were burning with fighting spirit, and her lips curved into a grin, exactly the opposite of the pain. The metal bars creaked under the strain of the group of goats. Several arms grabbed the bars, twisting them with superhuman strength. However, some bars were being pulled in opposite directions by different hands. Apparently, they really were stupid. The way these countless hands were grabbing the metal bars happened to match up by chance. Several hands grasping two metal bars neatly put their power together and pulled the bars to the left and right, creating an opening. The incredible sound of metal bending could be heard, and that gap was getting larger bit by bit. They attacked the arms of those goats one by one, but they weren't getting anywhere. They couldn't stop the gap from expanding left and right. A loud metallic sound came from behind them. Cannon had finally finished cutting. Cannon's <laughs> red sword, with which he'd cut the metal bars, disappeared. Oh no, did he use up his power? Uh oh. 
私たちのマリコンが中和されてる。よくも大魔女と呼ばれた私にここまで抗ったものですもはやその地下道ではあなたたちの魔法は使えませんよ The music just gets more and more epic A magic circle column drew complex magical formula around for Gilia With such full-fledged magic being used Shannon's power couldn't even compete On the contrary, it was surprising that she had withstood as much as she had 霊視優勢を確保さあシエスタ姉妹今度こそあなたたちの出番ですよってまた再起動してるんですかなんで最近の子は寝起きが悪いのも申し訳ありませんであります私たち全員バージョンが違っててなんでバージョン変わるたびにショートカットとプルダウンがしっちゃかめっちゃかになるに前回不正の終了がありました管理者権限<笑>何これわけわかんないウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウウキュウ999にしか聞こえん紙に書かせろ言語支援システム再起動できてないから文字も書けないにはあおお前たちはゆっくり修理していなさい私が行ってきますごめんなさい Now it's like we're facing the big boss right now The narrow underground passage was packed with goats, truly like a commuter train in the morning. Virgilia was again in disbelief at this congestion. What are you doing? Eh? I want to buy a bag for the first one. I don't want to buy a bag for the other one. I don't want to buy a bag for the other one. This... I'm going to buy a bag for the other one. I'm going to buy a bag for the other one. What? <laughs> yeah, beat her up, beat her up. Take care of her for us. Oh shit, they are. And if they kill her, then that would knock down whatever magical shield she's got up. <laughs> it's weird to see this turn into like a comedy right now. The five people in Krause's group dashed through the passageway with all their strength. They couldn't afford to dawdle around underground. They had to quickly join up with the children on the surface. Once everyone was together, there would no longer be anything to fear. Just then, a terrible rumble started closing in from behind. Had the pursuers finally made it through the metal bars? But they couldn't see anyone when they turned around. But that rumble and the dirt falling here and there from the ceiling grew closer and closer, finally catching up with them, and even going past them. It felt almost like they had just been passed by ghosts. The instant after they thought nothing had happened, the ceiling in front of them fell in, and a single goat stood in their path. Regilio was sitting on its shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, I keep forgetting Kumasawa. She's like some sort of Kumasawa whatever. Maybe it really was hap uh, maybe it really was happy even to receive such a dubious prize. The massive goat showed its joy by putting its hands together and wiggling. Regalia leapt down, laughing now that it was finally checkmate. <laughs> Mario 
Oh, he called them children. They're not furniture. They're like his kids too. <laughs> Regalia clapped her hands and a purple magic barrier appeared behind her, stealing even the faintest hope that Krauss had been betting on. Donji, Kyusuka. いや、またと。ジェシカも戦った。私が戦うわけにはいかん。本気なの無理よ。あんな巨大な化け物に。無茶苦茶だ。クロスさん、他の方法を考えましょう。思いついたら提案してくれたまえ。それまでも私が何と
I know what you're gunning for. The distance between the two of them is more than ten meters. If the goat and Kraus both step in with all their strength to settle the fight with a single blow, their power would be double the norm. Both will crash together, so it will be a relative four times normal. Even if, on top of that, the strike miraculously lands on a weak point for a critical hit, that will only double the power. In short, Kraus's maximum power level of 6 times 8 will cap out at 48 at the most. He might just barely be able to win if he repeated that lucky shot a full 20 times. Ho 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 ho. If you're killed every time you take a hit, and your damage still accumulates, let's see. Perhaps you could finally win when we get to episode 24? Ho 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 ho. If only this series could stretch on that long, I would literally never be able to finish this series if there was 24 chapters. <laughs> Either way, you don't have even the slightest chance of victory. What is that number? If it hits 10, is something going to happen or something? Like, what is that? Good gracious, what is that bing bong I keep hearing? I <laughs> As the goat got excited and beat its chest over and over, it took a position as though preparing for a sprint. Ho 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 ho. Is this what you were hoping for? Start. Uh, there it is again! What is that? Stake your hopes on your greatest power level and despair when even that doesn't reach at all. It pinged again. Is that Krauss's level going up or something? Like, what is that? That thing is really getting on my nerves. What is it? <laughs> The goat roared in response. Then, with a matched timing that only the men confronting each other could comprehend, the two leapt forward like bullets shot out of a gun. The men howled, collecting the strength from all over their bodies into one arm each. Well, you know what? If Kyrie can kill... If Kyrie and Rudolph can kill the... the purgatory... stakes or whatever, then maybe, maybe Cross has a chance. The goat's fiery glowing eyes clearly locked onto Krauss's face. He could perfectly see a vision of when he would step forwards, when he would punch through Kraus and blow him away, and when he would achieve his total victory. The long, painful- oh, it's going up! The long, painful days before today drifted through the goat's mind. The hard days of training where his senpais had picked on him. The faint glimpses of a senpai's warm concern during those days. And the joy of that day, his power had been acknowledged, and he had been accepted as one of the team. I never properly respected my parents. Are we going into- what- is this from the goat's point of view? That's right, I'd actually planned on washing my hands of this business when this job was over, and returning to my hometown. We're getting a backstory on the goat right now, what the fuck, this is so weird. Sorry, my little goat sister, your Oni-chan caused you nothing but trouble. And I actually have a childhood friend, and I'm going to marry her when I get home! Yeah! What is this? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing as, like, as soon as you say, like, I have a girlfriend that I'm gonna propose to when I get home. I was thinking, I was about to say, I was like, that means this goat's gonna die. I mean, I know what a loser flag is, but we're still gonna check it out. So, a loser flag... The term flag here originally described an invisible state value in a game's coding, which is said to be tripped or triggered when the player takes some action that influences future events. The moment of the flag trip itself is usually not visible, and it can only be detected through later changes in dialogue or events that signal to the player that they've impacted events or changed route. In casual usage of the term, and especially when applying the concept to a non-interactive medium, these moments that indicate clearly to the genre savvy that events are inexorably unfolding a certain way are themselves called flags. And it is in the sense that the phrase loser flag is used here to refer to the occurrence of a cliche that is almost always followed by a total failure for a character in his story. <laughs> it happened the instant before the two crashed and their punches crossed. <laughs> Is it only because he threw out the loser flags that she's like, you're gonna lose now? <laughs> the very instant the goat's left straight and Krause's right straight crossed. The goat obeyed Virgilia's order with super fast reflexes and hold back his straight, deflecting Krause's punch. 
Yes, Regelia's decision was probably wise. After all, the number of loser flags acting as a multiplier on the opponent's power level. Is that what those numbers were? Or about those were loser flags being... And then that was his power being multiplied based on each loser flag going up? What, what the hell? <laughs> oh my gosh. そう、そこでガラーキの右側面に右ストレートを叩き込んでやりなさい。何？左腕一本で戦う約束？やっそくは破るためにあるのでしょうが。And that's another flag tripped, I guess. <笑>失望よ、ワルギリア。あなたはやはり冷静を変えていたわ。なんですって。直前に気づいて避けさせた私の同行が冷静でないと。どうしてですか、キリエ様。あのまま激突していたら旦那様の勝ちだったのでは。そ、そうか。負けフラグの数が20でもまだ足りないんだ。This is so this like this became a completely different type of game right now. This is wild. It was so tense not that long ago, and now it's just... I don't know what this is. It's like a shounen anime right now. Krauses and the goat's double rush makes it times four. With a miracle on their side, the firm promise of a critical hit would double it again for times eight. On top of that, a multiplier of times 20 equal to the number of tripped loser flag supplies, making it times 160. At a glance, that looks like an incredible amplification, but even so, Krauss's power level is six. Even multiplied by 160, it only makes for a power level of 960. Just a fraction below the goat's 1,000. That's <laughs> Having deflected Krauss's right straight, the goat's own right straight closed in on the right side of Krauss's face, which had been left open. But there, it crossed with a left straight from Krauss. Does Krauss not even get like a cool CG moment when that happened? No? Okay. The two punches crossed and time stopped as each aimed for the face of the other. <laughs> I'm sure this is when like, but I have the power of love and then his power level goes even stronger. Yeah, Wargiria-san. And I love how these guys are just uh, coolly commenting from the sides. Right. No goddamn good at all. A cross counter is four times the destructive power. This is common knowledge in boxing. And if that is deflected and the right straight hits, then the double cross counter has eight times the destructive power. This is also common knowledge in boxing. If that is crossed by the principle of leverage, the triple cross then multiplies the destructive power by 12. This is also painfully common knowledge in the world of boxing. Is it though? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> a power level of 11,520. Krauss's punch now at the power to easily win that uh, Budokai tournament. 
勝利を最後まで諦めなかったクラウスさんの執念とあんたの慢心が招いた結果だどちらが欠けてもこの威力にはならなかったあんたよく戦ったよもう倒れてもいいんだぞ Nanjo patted the goat on the shoulder. Oh, Oni Chen gave it his all. As the sparkling drops from the goat's eyes scattered, he softly toppled backwards and flattened for Galia like a pancake. <laughs> the goat's massive body was too heavy for the slender Virgilia. She floundered around with it on top of her, but it didn't look like she'd be able to escape. In that instance, the barrier Virgili had sealed broke. This seems a little too good to be true right now. I don't... It almost feels like we're going to have a happy ending, but I should stop being so naive. ヤギさんもお大事に。<laughs> there was nothing more to block their way. They ran through the underground passage with single minded purpose. Jessica had finally been cornered with the wall at her back. Ronave's magic barrier was advancing bit by bit and would probably crush her against the wall before long. Considering the distance, this would be the final strike, the final throw of her iron fist. Jessica dealt out many punches so far. The wall wasn't invincible. It had already started to crack, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't be strange for it to smash at any moment. However, due to the rebounding damage, Jessica herself was in very bad shape, with cuts all over her body. もう吉野さい。あなたを押しつぶすつもりはありません。あなたの処遇は親方様が決めますからね。しかし、ジェシカ様のナイスファイトは私からも特に申し上げるつもりですよ。ふ、ふざけるんじゃ。ねえぜ
The three goats had been beaten down long ago. George definitely seemed in better shape than Jessica when we last saw him. He was being a little cocky about it. Without a single ragged breath, George cautiously closed the distance between him and Gap. He was after her. He was planning on bringing her down with a single strike. Gap was also aiming for a single strike. If she left that, if she let that chance slide, this time she would be killed. <laughs> Even the slightest, uh, even the tiny moment of weakness during the time it took to open the hole would prove fatal against George now. Gap cautiously calculated the distance and timing, but even as she did, George closed the gap between them. The instant she noticed George's body blur, only his jacket was floating in the air. A short sound of realization entered her mind, and in that instant, darkness covered her. George, with his heels swung up high, looked even like a massive dragon attacking from the sky. <laughs> Uh-oh. Gap opened a vast pit with her in the center and swallowed up George along with herself. The two were swallowed up by the pit and spat out from the ceiling of the arbor. But that was what Gap had been after, so she alone landed lightly. But there was another pit in George's landing spot. <laughs> Well, looks like Jessica and George are both not doing well. Whether the other guys will be able to get to them in time, we'll have to see. They said that even within a dead sprint, it's going to take them about 10 minutes to get there. George once again fell from the ceiling of the arbor. He had probably been dropped the same distance as falling off the roof of a two-story building. Now, if this was Angie, not a problem. <laughs> in midair, he couldn't control his posture in any way. It was impossible to resist or defend or avoid. As Gap spun like a whirlwind, she concentrated all of her energy on the sharp tip of her stiletto heel. This was the final strike to perform, her, uh, to perform his requiem. The Queen Bee's final strike that would bore into heaven, knocking him down to the true abyss. Her prey captured in her sight, she launched her foot up into the sky. It was then that she saw George's face. Oh! Even though he was in midair, he was calmly adjusting his glasses with the middle finger of his left hand like a true anime <laughs> protagonist. And his posture was still preserved as that of an axe kick, aiming for Gap's forehead without the faintest deviation. Well, okay, George has got control again. Let's see if Jessica can, can come back, because she seems in a lot worse state than George right now. <laughs>僕が地上の君に飛びかかとを喰らわせるために飛んでいたなら僕の姿勢はとっくに崩れていただろうさしかし僕の姿勢はいささかも崩れないなぜかわかるかいさっか僕は初めから数フロア下の君にかかとを
It was sucked into the black large hole. It suddenly opened up. Oh no, George is going to kill Jessica. Is he going to kick Jessica instead and she's going to punch him? Oh no. What's happening here? Oh no. Wow. I didn't see that coming. I didn't see any of this coming, to be honest. This is... Oh no, George. Did you just kill Jessica? Oh, he did. Oh no. Well, Gap, you're a good actress, because, uh, man, I fell for it. <laughs> Jessica's fist had gone for George's stomach, and George's axe kick had lined up on Jessica's head, so they killed each other! Ugh. The shocking destructive power imbued in Jessica's fist crushed George's organs and scattered his abdomen. The equally shocking destructive power in George's axe kick smashed half of Jessica's head and scattered its contents in the same manner. Oh no, so when everybody finds them, they're gonna be like, George and Jessica killed each other. Was this part of the test that they were, they were like, sent to kill each other? だって、魔女は演技力なんでしょう。ねえねえ、リーチ、どうよ。見ててくれたかしら。Yay! Beto and Gab gave each other a light high five. Yeah, Ballas is gonna be pissed about this. He's tried. He's tried to play it cool now, but seeing his cousins kill each other accidentally, that's that's gonna do it. That's gonna break him. Okay, so they have to maintain the locked room situation. Of course they do. All this time, and I'm pretty sure the game did it on purpose to separate um, Kumasawa and Goda and making it be like, okay, those are going to be the two who are going to be killed next. I didn't not think it was going to happen like this. Damn. Gap dropped Jessica's corpse into a pit and chucked all the chunks of meat too into Jessica's room as carelessly as throwing them in the trash. Oh god, poor Kraus. Poor Shannon. Poor Cannon. They tried so hard, but they didn't get there in time. So once again, they're using magic to explain the locked room situation that they're using portals to move the bodies around, but I'm like, oh, I still want to think about this from a human perspective, how this could have been done. <laughs> Jessica's corpse and lumps of flesh fell from the ceiling and poured out all over her room. Ronave shook his head slightly at this all-too-gruesome change. Jessica <laughs> <笑><笑> <laughs> in the arbor, brutally decorated by George and Jessica's scattered blood and guts, Gap enjoyed a loud laugh for a while. But she quickly realized that, in all seriousness, this was a little too filthy and undignified, and she snapped her fingers. As she did, gold butterflies rose up from the ground all around the garden, stuck to each of the bits and stained patches of blood and got them out. Then bit by bit, they slowly turned back into George's corpse, and the awful corpse with its guts splattered out was repaired into a clean corpse that looked like it was sleeping. 
Is uh, Ronove going to do the same for Jessica? Or is he going to keep her all splattered all over the place? Was this some kind of post-mortem sportsmanship towards a good opponent? The heavens were slowly split because Gap had lifted a leg high in the air, pointing at the sky. Squish. Without a trace of mercy, that foot was brought down and buried into George's forehead. Ah! Like the... Are they going to make it look like a stake was put in? Yeah, because they got to put the stakes in, right? Her stiletto heel, sharp as a weapon, was impaled through George's forehead. She pulled it out with a blorp. It was like a mark of proof that Gap had indeed finished him by her own hand. Damn. This game is so good. I kept saying over and over again, like, I know that this is not going to end well. I know they're not going to survive, but it still managed to give me a little bit of hope with that, like, pumping music and, you know, with George and Jessica being stronger than I thought. I was like, maybe, just maybe. And then also with, like, everybody escaping from the dungeon, I was like, maybe this is going to be the one. And of course, of course it wasn't. Ronave returned Jessica's corpse to its original form as well. And unlike how it had been with George, he had also restored Jessica's life. What? What? <laughs> is he just gonna is he just gonna kill her again though? <laughs> She's gotta die, right? Because it's gotta be the two who are close, they have to die. <sighs> or maybe she just has to die in a certain way. So he's just like, no no, you're gonna die, but I have to do it so that it looks like whatever plan they have for the body. <laughs> Whenever we hear this music, someone's about to die. <laughs> it was burnt into the back of Jessica's mind. For some reason, she remembered being thrown somewhere and that her head had been smashed by George's heel. <laughs>私の魔法でほんの心の整理さえ与えない。しかし私はここまで検討したあなたを称え、その時間を与えることにしました。その三分間でこの世の未練をよく整理されるといいでしょう。その三分で、マオジェスカ、あ、shouldn't <笑> But the power that had been burning inside Jessica's body was now completely lost. Jessica was aware of that herself. She was already dead. I almost feel like it's worse to like have her revive her and let her experience being alive, but knowing she's gonna die in three minutes. Like at least the way she died was really quick. But it's like now it's gotta kinda linger for a bit. She has to accept that. It's not like Canon and, and Kraus are there and she can say her goodbyes. It's like she's gonna be by herself to just contemplate everything. Ronave turned his form into a cloud of gold butterflies and disappeared. Maybe she could hurriedly like write a letter or something to her dad and Canon. All that remained was the sound of the wind and rain and the figure of Jessica crouching down against the wall. Jessica realized after three minutes she would probably revert to the corpse she had been. In those three minutes, was there anything she could do? She stood up and with a shaky gait, took the phone that was on the desk. Oh, they're not even there! She can't even say goodbye to them! Or, she, okay, she's gonna say bye to Badler and, like, warn them? Wow, this is so fucked up! Like, Badler be like, it's here for Jessica, like, hey, I'm gonna die in three minutes. Jessica! 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 Yeah, 
A line of blood dripped down from Jessica's forehead. <laughs> no pressure. Line of blood dripped down from Jessica's mouth as well. The left half of her head started hurting. Oh god, this is gonna like just slide right off or something? Ugh. Jessica realized she was about to return to the corpse she had been. So let's see here. So who do we have? We have in the so we have Cannon, Shannon, Kraus, Kyrie, Nanjo. So that's five right there. So it's gonna be a matter of who are gonna be the next five to go. <laughs> It's already it's already happened basically. By now, Badler had no idea what Jessica was saying, but from her tone, he realized that she knew she was about to die. So even though he didn't understand the situation, he urged her to hang on, and there.
Battler's sorrowful voice could be heard from the dangling receiver. Crouching with her head back against the adjacent wall, Jessica's head was half smashed. Kyrie stuck her face out of the well and then Kraus showed himself too. When he noticed they could see the back of the mansion beyond a grove of trees, Kraus realized more or less where they were. To think that there had been a hidden underground passage in a well all the way out here, and that it led to a hidden mansion. <laughs> Cannon was the last, climbing up the ladder towards them in the shaft disguised as a well. It was probably quite deep. When he looked down for the first time, he realized how far he'd come up. Oh! Oh shit! Okay, well, maybe we're gonna be losing a lot of people this episode. Oh damn! Wow! Everything is going to shit in this episode! It was so hopeful and then boom! Dead, 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 dead! Bang! As Cannon was about to finally crawl out of the well, a hole the size of a basketball opened up in his chest. Damn! I guess on the plus side that at least Cannon and Kraus don't have to see Jessica and Shannon doesn't have to see George like that. So literally we're left with just Goda, Kumasawa, uh, Badler, and Maria. Everyone there looked through the hole in Cannon's chest to the scenery beyond. Cannon <laughs> toppled backwards and was swallowed up into the depths of the well. <laughs> At that time, Kraus, Kyrie, and Nanjo clearly saw a golden curve appear from the well and sew itself through the side of Shannon's head. Shannon. Head pierced. The three were perfect witnesses to everything, up to and including the opposite side of her head being blasted away into a pulp. Shannon fell to her knees, blood gushing from both sides of her head, and flopped to the ground. Oh, this is my first time seeing Kyrie so flustered. Nanjo had become paralyzed in fright by the manner of Shannon's death, and the Chester sisters would not miss their chance. A curve again appeared from the well and pierced through Nanjo's forehead and out the back of his head in an instant, sewing through him. Thump. And so Nanjo expired. The two dashed into the back entrance of the mansion. Then the instant cross tried to shut the door behind him. A gold curve appeared for the fourth time, piercing Kraus from the back of his head out through his forehead and smashing even his forehead to pieces. <coughs> this is crazy. You know it's bad when Kyrie is like flustered. Krause's body lurched over, fell down hard, and drew a neat radial pattern with the insides of his head. Kyrie ran wildly through the hallway, flew into some room, and locked the door. But she couldn't imagine for a moment that this would save her life. She'd probably die soon. This was apparently one of the guest rooms. At that moment, a phone on the side table caught Kyrie's eye. Well, I mean, one escaped, but for how long? After hanging up the call from Jessica, Badler was literally just about to dash out. In that instant, the phone rang again. 
キリエさんはいバトラ君ラッキーだったわなんとか力を脱出できたの本当についてた And then she's gonna die over the phone Balor's like God damn it will people stop dying while I'm talking to them そこはどこだみんな無事なのかよこっちはジェシカとジョージの兄貴がどうやら聞いて私の命は多分もう長くは持たないわ Then, right after she got the sudden feeling, the keyhole of the locked door might have glowed gold. A gold curved line drawing a helix. No, a golden sewing thread. Infiltrated the room through there at an incredible speed and bored a hole into the floor by Kyrie's feet. Oh, that's rare. The enemy who had sniped the other four, one after another, with extraordinary skill, apparently really does have trouble shooting me between the eyes with a single shot while I'm holed up in this room. But the next strike will probably hit. At this point, Kyrie finally remembered the initial massacre in the dining hall. That's right. This is what killed Rudolph and the rest. All six of them. Kyrie. 食堂で親族会議が始まってそして何が起こったかを全て話すわ口を挟まないで最後まで聞いて、well, 途中で急に電話が切れるかもしれないそしたらその時は私が殺された時よキュリエそう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。そう。About how she had escaped somehow and made it to where she was now. And how everyone had finally been killed, all spoken dispassionately, as if she had seen it, or as she had seen it, with no dramatization. She even spoke about how everyone except her had been killed, and how she had observed the moments of all their deaths, and how, even this very moment, someone was trying to kill her. <laughs> くるくる回りながら私を狙ってくるの最初は足元次は肩の近くさっきのは耳をかすったわ狙いがだんだん正確になってくるそろそろ私の眉間にズドンと来そうねに逃げろキリアさん逃げてくれあっポーバドラーここへよ私ここまで逃げ延びてきて部屋に閉じこもって鍵までかけてるのよそれでもなお狙われてる私がどこに隠れるのよねえキリアさまねえバトラ君ジェシカちゃんとジョージ君まだ生きてる<笑>さっきジェシカから電話がなんかダメみたいキュリエさんの声は、完全に、あなたの人生を変えたことができない。もう、私には何が何だかわからない。キュリエさんの声は、完全に、あなたの人生を変えたことができない。何あなたの前に悪魔やら魔女が現れてもああその正体を疑う必要は何もないわそういうものだと理解して<笑>何か仕掛けがあるはずだとか正体があるはずだとか I still think there's a trick <laughs> The game is trying to tell me so much that the demons are real I'm like no I refuse そんなことを考える余裕があったら相手の機嫌を損ねないことを考えた方がよっぽど
どに建設的間違ってもなら魔法を見せてみろなんて言っちゃダメよその証拠を彼らはこの上なく残酷な方法で見せるでしょうから This is like In this game, it's like、uh, maybe Beatrice is like controlling Kiri to say this because what does Beatrice want? She wants Bella to believe in witches and magic. So it's like Kiri is telling him, don't doubt it, just accept it. I wonder if it's gonna shoot to like the、uh, you know, the area where it's like Badler and Angie and Beatrice are looking on. Badler's like, nice try, Beatrice. I see what you're doing. <laughs> Man, Kira is really pushing it. Just making me think even more like this is a manipulation. On Bad's Reach's part to get him to believe in her. Oh my goodness, this is so sad. They literally called each other, like, he called her mom in this one. That was so sweet. Oh. I felt as though I heard an incredible sound at the other end of the receiver. At least she heard, that was the last thing she heard, you know? And then a noisy, clattering sound, as though the receiver had fallen to the floor. Kiriza! Kiriza! Mara's like, I'm trying to watch TV here. Can you, can you keep it quiet, please? <laughs> oh, that was a face. Curious saw I never responded through the phone again. Oh, man. That was, uh, this is a rough one, man. <laughs> All right, well, I apologize for a shorter episode this week,、uh, but man, oh man, it was,、uh, this was a good episode. It was really freaking sad. After all that hope from the last one, George and Jessica being such badasses, unfortunately, the thing that I knew in my heart was going to happen happens, but I wasn't expecting so many deaths this episode. So the 13 people are dead, the witch will revive, and Badler, I assume, is about to take his test. So. It's like Kyrie said, it's probably going to be, it's probably, it will probably be Beatrice herself giving that test to Badler. And,、uh, man, oh man, I am very excited to see what happens. But I bet right about as the test is about to happen, it's going to go back to 1998 again. <laughs> and then we're going to be doing Angie's thing, but then I'll get into that, and then it's going to flip back and forth. But I don't know, guys, I don't know how much time is left of this, of this episode or this chapter, but、uh, I am super excited to see what happens. I always say that, but I really am. So, like I said at the beginning of the、uh, episode, unfortunately, I will be taking a week off for videos、uh, to just kind of decompress after the holidays, give myself a break. So, I'm so sorry to leave it on such a cliffhanger, but you guys will have to wait.、Uh, it's not, not next Friday, but the Friday after will be the next episode.、Uh, I hope you guys are excited for it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye. Special shout outs to my top tier patrons Nana, Sparky, Dumbass Loser, Tequila Mockingbird, Puncake G, Derek Nickel, Harry Gazif, Asborn Kennedy, and Icognito. <laughs>